Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brain's player too, and today I want to crack open your head and learn a bit about how your ancestors lived. That's right, we're talking Assassin's Creed. While the game's explanation for how we can murder hapless guards in a variety of different periods and places keeps me from having to do more research on time travel, thank the father of understanding, it does explore some of the fascinating ways scientists believe our brains work and how our experiences shape our very DNA. Assassin's Creed is the story of an epic battle through the centuries between the Knights Templar and the Brotherhood of Assassins. The Templars want to rule the world by stripping away humanity's free will, and the Assassins want to stab the Templars so they can't do that. The stories, set in various points throughout history, are told from the perspective of the present or near future through the use of a device called the Animus. People in the present get hooked into the Animus and are able to enter the memories of their ancestors, living the events just as they did. If they attempt to deviate from what really happened in history, they risk desynchronization, which in video game terms means game over. In the original Assassin's Creed trilogy, which is made up of five games because damn if Ezio Auditore is not one charming main character, I digress. Desmond Miles uses the Animus to inhabit the lives of his ancestors in order to learn the location of various powerful MacGuffins that could save the world destroy it. To be honest, the plots of these games are a little convoluted, but the important question we want to tackle is this. Could we ever tap into the memories of our ancestors? Assassin's Creed is not the first to put forward the idea. Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung hypothesized something known as the collective unconscious in 1925. According to his theory, the collective unconscious is shared memory that descendants of a common ancestor can tap into. Gee, that sounds like the exact setup for every Assassin's Creed blast of the past. It's probably why the game named the device that makes it all possible the Animus. It's the Jungian archetype representing our male ancestors and their memories. Looks like some Ubisoft writers were paying attention in their intro to psychology class. But where they take liberties, both with Jungian psychology and genetics, is how deep these memories go. Jung believed that the Animus embodies more the ideas and attitudes of the men in our past, not the experiences they lived through. Likewise, there is evidence that our DNA imbues us with memories from before our time, but they're less Renaissance Florence in 1080p and more nebulous urges. Ah, dang it. You might call those instincts, and there's evidence that suggests they can be passed from one generation to the next. Some species of birds can be raised in soundproof isolation and yet will be able to sing their songs as well as birds that were socialized normally. Burrowing mice build remarkably standardized tunnels even if they're raised in captivity and have never even seen sand before. Researchers have crossbred two different species of mice that build unique tunnels and were able to pinpoint exactly which genes determine how their tunnels are designed. Natural selection can explain how these types of traits could develop. DNA mutates naturally, either through mistakes in copying or repair. These mutations can lead to mice that have the instinct to build slightly different tunnels, and the mice with the best tunnels won't get eaten by predators as often, so they're more likely to pass on the blueprint. Eventually, their mutation will be the norm, but the process will take many thousands of years. Assassin's Creed seems to think that just one experience can have an impact on descendants far in the future, and as a matter of fact, that's true. Your environment can change your DNA, yes by mutating it if you live near a local nuclear waste dump, but that's changing the genotype, the physical code of your DNA. Your environment, age, and yes, even experiences can change your phenotype, which is how that code is expressed. Events can switch genes on or off, and the state of that gene can be passed on. Scientists have shown this when they conditioned mice to be afraid of the scent of cherry blossoms. When they examined the DNA in their sperm, they found the section of their DNA that made them sensitive to the smell of cherry blossoms was much more active. Sure enough, the children and even grandchildren of these mice would avoid the scent, even though they had no reason to be afraid. The scientists suggested this may be where irrational fears, phobias, come from. And I bet if there's one thing mice are afraid of, it's scientists. So, based on current research, Desmond can't remember exactly where Altair hid the Apple of Eden, but he should have a healthy distrust of those nice men in the white coats with the Templar crosses. Oh, and he definitely should be afraid of heights. Yes, I know a lot of you asked if landing in hay was a realistic way of cushioning a leap of faith, and while there's not enough info for a full episode, I thought we'd throw it in as a fun bonus while we're on the topic of Assassin's Creed. Your assassin can jump from some ridiculously high landmarks, like Giotto's Bell Tower in Florence, a structure we know to be 84.7 meters tall, with a convenient cart of flowers right at the bottom. Since Earth accelerates falling bodies at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared, that means Ezio will be traveling over 146 kilometers per hour when he reaches the cart. Now, you may think the cushiness of the flowers is what matters, but really, that's not what's important. What's important is they're only about a meter thick, so Ezio slows down from 146 kilometers per hour to a dead stop 
in just a meter, which would take him all of 0.05 seconds. Assuming uniform deceleration, his body would experience 81 times the force of gravity in an instant. In other words, the first assassin that tried the leap of faith was probably the last one too. So they'd never pass on their genetic memory and everything you just learned is irrelevant. Unless nothing is true, then everything is permitted. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Play Noggin. If you liked what you saw, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for topics or games you'd like to see us cover, leave us a comment down below. Check out our other videos right here, and don't forget to keep on playing.